back here live in New York City. This is Silicon Angle. We keep on the exclusive coverage of HP Moonshot here, special event uh, where the server business is changing, the computer business is changing, everything's changing, everything's transforming. We're going to break it down for you. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and Patrick Moorhead is in the house on theCUBE. Uh, Patrick's the uh, president and principal analyst at Moore Insights and Strategy, a fast-growing consultancy. Patrick, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, thanks for having me on. Good to see you. Uh, uh, Mark Potter was saying in the Q&A session that you've been following this from the early days. You kind of had the sort of inside track on, on what's been going on. So now that you've seen this come to life, you know, what do you think? What can you share with us? Uh, it, it couldn't have all been pretty, but uh, <laughs> it looks like a nice package. Yeah, it's really impressive. And, and even going back five, seven years ago, we've been doing a lot of work in GPU compute with uh, accelerators and, and things like that. And um, the coolest thing is that bringing this to more of a mainstream market. Now, you know, this is a scale out environment, which some people won't call mainstream, but in the context of scale out, this is really cool technology that's uh, delivering real value. Yeah, so um, when you look at uh, the changes, the sea changes that you've seen over the last, you know, decades, let's say, yeah. um, where, do you, where do you put this one? Well, the, um, I would put this uh, right up there uh, with the transition from proprietary Unix servers to standard x86 servers. And the biggest driver here is, is the fundamental shift uh, to mobility and the Internet of Things. And, you know, if you, you know, let's say you require for every 10 smartphones you need one server, um, we're shifting, there were literally a billion smartphones uh, it's going to be a billion phones that were sold last year. And imagining those all transitioning to smartphones, and imagine that the rate that people are consuming that, and you add on top of that, that all of these different devices, like from refrigerators to watches to Google Glass uh, to even having intelligence in clothing are all going to be connected, uh, today's data centers just can absolutely not take that. So, so what is it about Moonshot that makes it so well suited for, the, for those, those workloads and apps? Is it the, the ability to handle diversity? Is it the packaging? Is it the power consumption? Talk about that a little bit. The biggest change technologically is moving from this general purpose, very large core environment to literally having a server card or processor for the best type of application. So in, in the Moonshot mix, you're going to have CPUs, uh, GPUs or graphics, uh, digital signal processors. Uh, you're going to have FPGAs, uh, which are used for just heavy duty number crunching. And you put that all in there, you can literally, and, and you heard it up on stage today from HP's uh, customers, they're going to have specific servers for a specific application, uh, whether it's genome mapping, uh, whether it's cloud gaming, uh, whether it's um, uh, high performance computing, um, gosh, deep packet inspection is, is a great, great example uh, of this. And, and that's a fundamental change. Now, the second, uh, second major change here is that this isn't, this isn't a, an HP thing only. Okay, they've, they've opened up and created an ecosystem where you, know, you heard about five, five partner vendors today. A year from now, it could be 15, along with uh, OS providers, OS tool providers, uh, application providers that get in the game. And, and you know, as we've seen from, from Apple and, and iTunes, you know, when you, and the App Store, when you create an ecosystem, people create stuff that you never would have even thought of. The, uh, obviously the shift to you know, this new modern era, as Dave and I always talk about on theCUBE, and what we talk about on SiliconANGLE, and, and what he researches on Wikibon is, this modern era so we're moving into. And, you know, all those mobile devices is just one example. We mentioned Internet of Things, you got telematics uh, booming, et cetera, watches that are going to have all kinds <laughs> of sensors on them. You name it, and you wrote up a nice piece on Forbes today, kind of, you know, uh, outlining all that. But it puts pressure on the, on, on the data centers and the, and the infrastructure that powers that. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and a lot of stuff's going on, OpenStack, AWS, all that stuff's happening. But I want to ask you about the traditional IT environment. Right. Traditionally, scale up commercial software, buy some Oracle license, in the old days, buy some Sunbox yeah. or HP boxes. A lot of gear, a lot of bare metal, rack and stack. Right. 
to get stuff going, it takes a lot of money and effort. That's why cloud's been so great. It's why Amazon's doing so good. That's where everyone's going there. But I want you to talk about the challenges of the mindset of that IT enterprise that has to transform right. over to a world that is dominated by developers now, yeah. software, and scale out, where you yeah. need commodity hardware, or industry standard hardware, as HP wants to call it. But uh, ultimately, it's a lot of gear, a lot of servers, a lot of storage spread all around yeah. the infrastructure, utilized maybe not 100%, Power is a huge issue. These are all cutting edge trends. How does that modern era relate to this moonshot and where do you see it going? Yeah, so um, to understand kind of where we're going, we got to know where we are today, which you outlined great, but where do we come from that really defines the mindset of, of current, uh, current IT, uh, enterprise IT has been there when there were many computers and mainframes, there's still mainframes out there obviously, but where you, you had a different box for different applications. Uh, you know, I cut my teeth uh, with NCR with financial applications where you had a system 360 for uh, the general ledger, you had tandem for ATMs, uh, you had deck for treasury, and it ended up being a mess. And then we went through this uh, homogenous centralization with virtualization and pulled a lot of that stuff in with client server uh, to where we are today. So there's going to be a natural inclination to push against this as 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 where it, it wants to go, but uh, you mean the scale out? Scale out, yeah. yeah. And, and push against the scale out. People are going to be paying used the, to it. The the biggest um, objection to scale out is security. But in in three years, three to five years, people are actually going to change it to um, the cloud is the most secure place to be in a scale out environment because the cost to do that is uh, a standard enterprise won't be able to afford it anymore. So the way that this is going to come in is, is there will be a corner of the data center uh, where somebody can get this, this absolutely immense speed up or they can pull uh, power down to a minimum and they'll cut their teeth. Let's call it um, uh, even a major bank where they're, they're one of the largest uh, web servers where they can put Apache in as an example and doing uh, a flat file Apache serving could be a great place to start. Hybrid clouds is another one where you can take advantage of the scale out technology without actually having to put it, uh, put it on your premises. So th there's another component to this too, Patrick, that I'd like to talk about in, in scale out and hyperscale specifically, is the, the hyperscale customers will spend a lot of engineering time trying to like, hyper automate um, yeah. such that they don't ever have to have a human you know, get involved in doing things like replacing failed components. They'll just let the thing die and then throw it in the wood chip <laughs> when it's done. Um, that's a hard engineering problem, and a lot of companies don't have the resources to do that. So what do you see as the software infrastructure that has to evolve in order yeah. for that to become a reality in the traditional enterprise? Uh, great question. I mean, currently today, uh, these scale-out data, data centers, they roll their own OS literally down to the kernel. Uh, they buy nothing prepackaged. they do it themselves, in addition to the management services that they have, which sometimes is just what failed so I can go throw it away, because <laughs> it has automatic failover, okay? Um, and they're using open, open stacks like LAMP stack mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do this. Um, uh, open flow for networking, um, um, and even, you know, literally open stacks. So, they have the ability uh, to do that over time. As the economic opportunity grows, I, I see uh, people like Microsoft getting into the game uh, uh, more heavily supporting this heterogeneous computing environment. Because it does take a lot of work to make your OS work with CPUs, GPUs, DSPs, and, and FPGAs. Um, but if those packaged operating system providers want to play in this space, they're going to have to support this. So what do you make of um, uh, Facebook's open compute uh, initiative? Uh, th there's some s similarities in the multi-personality yeah. capability here. Of course, Facebook is you know, not a you know, server vendor, uh, but they're defining, trying to mm -hmm. anyway, define a standard that, that server vendors and other ecosystem partners can, can actually write to. Do you see Moonshot as competitive to OCP, complementary? How do you see that all shaking out? So um, I will, I, I see Moonshot as, as very comprehensive and, and wide in the fact that it supports multiple compute engines uh, with a hardware architecture that you can just slot different things in and out. 
Uh, I see OCP as a, as a narrower uh, opportunity here, literally redefining an architecture um, every revision that they have, literally down to changing the width of the rack. So I don't think that there's one uh, architecture that's going to win them all because this opportunity is so big, but I think it's going to be a challenge for open compute uh, to change everything down to the bare metal every time that they want to make a revision. And I don't see open compute supporting accelerators like GPU compute, uh, DSPs, or FPGAs, which are an essential part of, of this heterogeneous computing. Okay, so OCP is, is, is narrower. Um, Moonshot's gonna get, find its way into to, to more use cases, and who knows, potentially even Facebook. I mean, could, could you see uh, a, a, a Moonshot going into applications like that? I mean, why not? Well, I could in Facebook. I mean, Facebook isn't, isn't uh, um, uh, they'll take the best technology in, and I could see uh, an HP Moonshot uh, system inside of Facebook for specific usage models that open compute just doesn't address today. The hyperscale guys are also, they, they kind of don't like frills. <laughs> you know? um, is Moonshot defrilled enough to penetrate that, that market in a, in a big way, and or do the hyperscale guys actually need some of that? You know, and are, they, are they maturing, you know, those two worlds coming together? Yeah, so mo most scale up guys don't need the management chips and management software that comes with it. Th they're just not going to use that. Right. And I think it really is going to come down to um, an element of, of pricing yeah. uh, in, in, in one instance. Uh, they also are very comfortable with moving vendors in, in and out at a, at a very rapid pace. So uh, we'll wait and see uh, how, how that rolls out. I do think, though, the flexibility to be able to uh, take these cards inside and out um, but and, and having a common chassis, there's a lot of value to that. So instead of rolling in, rolling out a complete box, uh, you can literally change up cards uh, on the fly if you want to to address uh, capacity issues in your in your scale out data center. Patrick, um, HP Moonshot uses partner silicon partner software. What does HP bring to the table outside of the packaging that you see in this deal? Well, the biggest thing is the ecosystem. Um, in in getting people on ramped with uh, with new cartridges, uh, OSs that are compatible, uh, tools that work with the OSs to make sure it's quote unquote certified. Ironically, for for some government applications, uh, HP will never see the cartridge, uh, in that they're doing something very special uh, with it that quite frankly they don't want other people uh, to to know about. So. They're fostering this ecosystem of, of, of hardware uh, and software to, to get it to this point where, honestly, you don't know where it's going to go when you've got an ecosystem uh, going like this. Uh, the key, the challenge is going to be that uh, some, some midterm profitability for the partners, right? I mean, nobody would be at the Apple App Store if they weren't making money and didn't see an opportunity. That's going to be the challenge, uh, having a lot of partners in, with, a, with a, a very high ramp up to, to keep people's mind in the game. Because it, it yeah. uh, you know, while it's easier to develop a cartridge than it is a server, mm -hmm. it still takes uh, a decent amount of resources. So I'll get your take on the, on the developer community, because obviously you mentioned the old days, IBM ran the general ledger and CR, you, you know, then they put it all together. Um, in today's market, you see similar challenges where you have you know, that general purpose model going away where you have custom custom builds and people are saying, oh yeah, yeah, everyone just wants to build their own open compute summit, which is, might not make it in time, might be around, but ultimately people want vertically oriented applications and infrastructures vertically integrated to that where open source could play a role. So um, in this custom game, how do you see that playing out where people are saying you can still get high performance with custom, is that compatible with, with the scale out and how would you talk to people about that? that challenge and that question? So, so the reason why the mainframe and the, and the mini ran into challenges is that the rate of acceleration uh, was nowhere even near the speed as general purpose x86 servers. And the difference here is, is the reason why this has a much better chance of, of, of offering the speed uh, um, and the flexibility is because you have this ecosystem of folks, a lot of, a lot of people who are in the smartphone 
business who are churning out new technologies every three to six, three to six months, and with a, a stable, for lack of a better term, backplane, uh, popping these, these upgraded um, cartridges uh, in place when you need them, I think um, um, uh, narrows that or, or alleviates that uh, challenge uh, that I see. Patrick, what's your, what's your prog- you've been in the semiconductor business as well, as well and you've got a varied background. What's your prognos- prognosis for, for Intel? Um, you're seeing just the volume, the sheer volume of, of you know, low power chips like, like ARM are just you know, dwarfing you know, tr- traditional x86 and, and, and volume wins generally in uh, the, the semiconductor world. So wh- what do you see there? Can Intel move fast enough to low power? Is it, you know, you know, fundamentally harder for a company that's so you know got such fixed assets to do that. What, what's your take? Well, uh, the irony of it is is that there's nothing about x86 that makes it higher power, okay? And and I think Intel did a good job with their smartphone processor called Medfield to mm-hmm. show that that versus ARM they they are as efficient. Um, to the data center, it it's all about the rack. Right, power at the rack or in, or in the fleet of racks. Intel is perfectly capable of, uh, of doing that. It really comes down to a business model decision. Now, interestingly enough, if, if you're packing 1,800 processors in a server and you compare that to the economics of, of what, what, it be, uh, what it would be to a Xeon and you own the fabric, there's not as much difference as, as, as you might think in it. Uh, I think uh, what Intel needs to focus on is those other accelerators that, that go in there. They currently have Xeon Phi Accelerator, which is uh, similar to, I would say, architecturally to a x86 uh, flavor uh, with a more of a GPU architecture. Um, but they, they need to be considering other types of accelerators too, otherwise that um, silicon uh, revenue will go to somebody else. Yeah, I should have actually asked HP this, but but you may know. I mean, I presume I'd be able to slot i fives and i sevens into Moonshot. Yeah, I, I believe on stage I heard uh, Xeons uh, as well yeah. as well as Atoms in, and there are a lot of workloads that fundamentally run better on on big cores. So I don't think this is an either or. It's it's an and. Well, so I mean, so I tweeted out earlier today that this uh, ultimately I think this needs. We blades looked at all the programs out there, this, and right now the processors, are, you know, the memory's too small. But you know, to the extent that I mean, this seems to me to be the future of, of packaging. I mean, you wrote an article on Forbes yeah. saying goodbye vanilla servers. Yeah. I mean, do you buy that? I mean, is this the future of server packaging? This is absolutely the future, fundamentally, because we're running out of space and power, and the only way to attack that is to grow the data centers bigger and be more prescriptive on a specific application for a specific server. Otherwise, mm-hmm. the efficiencies don't make sense. So this is, and this, this, will, this will not only eat into blades, this will also eat, eat into racks. Yeah. And if you think about um, a small business, uh, in three to five years, are small businesses really going to be able to afford bringing in their own infrastructure and sticking it in their closet or uh, uh, let's say if it's it's ten cents on the dollar going to an Amazon or uh, uh, an HP cloud uh, to um, do their OpenStack based um, um, applications in terms of HP and with Amazon their proprietary AWS. So it's heat density and it's non differentiated heavy lifting. Really is so we have two minutes left. So I want to get just a couple quick questions before we do kind of your final take on. I want to ask you about the competition real quick because that hasn't come up yet. I want because you're an analyst, you want to get your perspective on yeah. that. Got a comment on Twitter though that uh, sorry, the software defined server made me throw up in my mouth a little. Um, <laughs> and I, I guess he's referring. I just tweeted back. You know, software led maybe a better term that we yeah. use. Um, but I think people are missing the point about what this means. I don't think they're being as uh, it's all semantics. It's not like software defined as in the networking which OpenFlow drove, yeah. but more specifically a software enabled environment. Can you just give your view on that and then talk about the competition to Moonshot? Sure, so first of all, it is confusing. SDN, um, uh, you know, SDS and SDN, it, it is confusing. And it, it tripped me up a little bit uh, uh, at first, but essentially it means it all starts with the workload and the application. And you build out your server based on what you need. Uh, do you need big compute, small compute? Uh, do you need a DSP or an FPGA? And so it's literally based on the software. It's the server is based on the software. 
and and I do think, as I said before, yeah. that that software, is the future. Software and it enables software developers. So I think this is where the hype kind of you know dissecting what the hype is. Okay, is are, is HP just using the hype term to kind of market and, and yeah. put a stake in the ground? But you're specifically the software in the system, but it's also enabling software developers to write code. It, it is. It is. It's also about a way of thinking about it that it starts with the software. Okay, it doesn't start with the hardware, it starts with the software and what you actually want to do with it, uh, which defines how you configure your server uh, in a moonshot environment. Okay, and final final word, we're getting the hook here because yeah. we're on a tight schedule. Um, what does this mean to the industry, real quick, uh, sound bite here? No, I think this is a huge day for the industry in, in that I really do think we're going to look back and say, hey, this was the beginning of, of, of something big, something which took us to uh, the next level. Let's see if the ecosystem can step up and rally around HP. Obviously, we, we're big fans of this direction. We covered Moonshot last year. This is theCUBE's special presentation uh, in New York City for covering HP's Moonshot. A lot more action stay right here. We got uh, a lot more interviews and get, we're going to get the signal from the noise here inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break.